Overwatch 2 developer blog. This is part two. Wait, hello? Why did that just, did you just see that? I, I saw it turn off for a second. Welcome back heroes for part two of our matchmaking series. In part one, we talked about how matchmaking works. An incredibly complex system that needs to consider many different inputs to make every single game as fair as possible. For part two, we're going to address some community concerns interesting regarding the matchmaker from the perspective of the competitive game mode let's get into it okay um i guess i'll read the tldr but i want to see the juice anyway so let's see what, what this is going to be about tldr your ranked games are formed based on the internal matchmaking rating mr yep regardless of your displayed skill tier I remember I made a video trying to explain this to people and I, I sounded like an absolute psychopath because you needed like a degree in Overwatchology to even have like a chance of understanding it and it was crazy. Uh, MMR change, changes based on the result of each match with the amount of MMR you gain or lose depending on several factors like how highly rated your opponents were or how recently you last played. A recent you last played. That's interesting. Okay. I wonder if that was like for like long periods of time or like say a month. Um, our team is aware of some of the community's pain points with competitive and matchmaking. We have set off, wait, we have a, sorry, sorry. We have a set of improvements coming to matchmaking and we're also working on updates to the competitive system. For competitive play in season three, we'll reduce the number of wins between competitive matches from seven to five wins or 20 to 15 losses. I think that's still a little high, but I'm down, I'm down. That, that's I, that's actually a really good change. Um, for our matchmaker, we're implementing role delta changes that will match similarly ranked players within each role. So I think there was, there was a whole uh, blog that came up before this talking about role delta. Um, but that's interesting. So to that, I mean like your tank is gonna be the same rating is their tank, which is cool. Uh, that scares me because of queue times are already really bad. And uh, I've been watching emo in the last few days because I've been kind of like just taking it easy because it's end of season, things are a little bit slow. Um, and emo sits in like 20 minute queues. So I'm actually very confident that I could probably go from like mid to low top 500 where I'm sitting right now to probably high top 500 with Ramatra being, in my opinion, meta. Um, because I'm pretty decent at Ramatra, but it's not worth it because I don't want to sit in 20 mini queues. Um, season four will include additional information about your current wins and losses on the competitive update screens. Our team has begun work on long-term features and updates for both the matchmaker and competitive game mode. And we're looking forward to sharing more of those plans here in the, or sorry, more of those plans in the future. Okay. Now give me the juice, the long, 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 long-winded, very long explanations. Tell me everything, everything you can tell me. Okay, let's go. Here's what we're currently seeing in ranked. We've seen your feedback on matches with wide skill variation. This means, you know, plat players playing with GMs or at least perceived that way. And we wanna talk about a few reasons that could be happening as well as our plans to address your concerns. We allow players to group together even when there's a difference in the MMR between party members. Um, okay. And this is a major source of the wide skilled disparities in matches. Okay, so parties is the reason? Interesting. We're working on some changes that will match parties with similar MMR disparities together more frequently, which we expect to noticeably reduce how often we make wide matches. This will make it much less likely for a solo player or a party with a narrow skill disparity to end up in a match with a wide skill disparity. So I think this is basically saying, you know, you play with like friends that are like very wide in, in rank. So like a plat player playing with like a silver player. I can't read, why not, why not? It's too far out, I can zoom in it a little bit more. Is that helpful? Is that better for you? Um. Basically, what it's saying is like you play um, with players that are like too far away from each other. It's hard for the matchmaker um, to make a better game for them. Um, but also, I think also it's trying to say like it's harder for solo players to play against parties. 
Um, so it's making it less likely for a solo player to bump into uh, stacks, which is very interesting. Um, often matches with a wide displayed skill tier difference still look very close when looking at the difference in MMR between the two teams. So basically... Often matches with a wide skill displayed skill tier difference still look very close. So basically, even if like they're all plat and silver and they're playing against another team, the MMR averages of the teams are about the same. I think that's saying. Uh, the partial rank reset at the beginning of the season may be exaggerating this by making it look like someone is lower there than their actual rank. Okay, this is something I talked about a lot, and I talked about why it was stupid and, and really confusing for the player. Because even though the matchmaker thought you were masters, it showed you plat, and then you would play against masters players, and then the masters players who had been playing throughout the season would look at the plat player, and they go, well, I have a plat team in on my team, GG. But they're not actually plat, they just haven't played enough games to climb up yet, because the, the rank reset puts them to plat, but they're not actually plat, they're actually masters, but they have to play enough games and win enough games to get their rank back. It, it, was, it was a really, really dumb system. Um, cause the MMR would be hard pulling their, their rank up and even losses like didn't really count for that much, but the wins were like big W's for them, but it was all about playtime, which was really, really annoying. Um, however, regardless of the, uh, seasonal reset, both skill tier, both skill tier and MMR can decay over time for players who are inactive for a considerable amount of time. Interesting. I, do we know what the MMR decay looks like? Because we I've heard of it before, but like it was like going into Overwatch 2. After that, like there was no specifics that were ever talked about with this in like how long does it take, you know? Players who return may see dramatic shifts in their skill tiers as they resume playing regularly and the game becomes more certain of that player's current skill. So I think this is what it's trying to say is it's going to like bring you down a bit if you haven't played for a long time, but it's going to try to readjust you very quickly as if you're a new player. Um, for those who don't know, new like when a new player starts playing, it's very drastic shifts. That's how you get players that like were bronze on another account. They make another account and they place plat. And they're like, see, I'm actually plat. But if you actually kept playing games, you would shoot back down your actual rank. So. The more you play, the more accurate your MMR and rating will always be. Yes, that's pretty much the point of it. Um, so I think this is this. I know that's how it works with new accounts and new players. Um, but it's interesting that that works with MMR for old accounts. I just wonder how long it is. Uh, we've also seen the community talk about inconsistent games or how they feel games feeling incredibly one sided. And that feedback has been helpful. I've seen this a good amount. Yes. Although I think there's other reasons for that. Understanding what causes one-sided matches and how to reduce their frequency has been a major area of focus for our team. This is a tricky, tricky problem because one-sided matches can happen in Overwatch, even between balanced teams. So our first step has been to study the problem and understand the various factors that can cause one-sided matches. And we're planning to share what we learn with you in a developer blog down the road. Interesting. Um, so basically what this means is like you have those games where the enemy team has, everyone on their team has 35 kills and your team together has scrapped together two, you know, and you're just getting smoked the whole game. Um, competitive updates are another topic we've been exploring. Want you to, we want you to feel the sense of progression without needing to focus on a super granular number like a skill rating, but we feel an, an agree, but wait, but we feel an agree with the community that competitive updates are a bit too infrequently, or sorry, are a bit too infrequent currently, agreed on this. Um, one of my biggest things is I definitely feel like there's no progression for me anymore. And there's also feels like there's no reward for even, actually, to be honest with you, personally, I feel like you're punished for being good at Overwatch nowadays because your Q10s get unreasonably long. Um, here's the direction we're talking, Sorry, here's the direction we're taking moving forward and what we're doing in Season 3. Okay. Based on community feedback, we're implementing some updates to the matchmaker that try to place pairs of players with similar MMR on each role of either team. That's really cool. So your tanks are going to be like, your both your tanks are going to be the same MMR. Your DPS are going to be the same MMR. Your support are going to be the same MMR. That's awesome. Um, 
I wonder if that's so for tank that's easy, but I wonder for DPS and support. Like let's say, you know, one team has a GM and a low masters player. Does that mean the other team also has a GM and low masters player? Probably. Um, but it's like being able to tell who's who is going to be an interesting one. It's also probably going to feel interesting if you end up still having that. And it depends on how far the disparities go. Because if you have someone who's like pretty high GM on one team on DPS, and then you have a mid diamond support player, even though the other team has a mid diamond support player, the mid diamond support player being in a high GM lobby is going to throw the whole game off. Even though they both have the diamond support player, the game just feels bad. It just feels weird because that player isn't going to be able to keep up with the caliber of players everyone else is on both sides. So I don't know. I, that's the only downside I could see this having. Um, this means that the opposing tanks should be more similarly matched than before and likewise on other respective roles. The goal with this is to change uh, the average MMR between each role more evenly matched. Wait, the goal of this change is to make the average MMR between each role more evenly matched to each other instead of looking more broadly across the entire team to balance things out. Okay. Um, this is a major change to the matchmaker, so we'll be actively monitoring for any unintended side effects. I feel like the, I feel like the way you do this though is like to keep to pull, to keep queue times from going outrageously high. Is you're gonna need to pull players from small like lower ranks, and that's how you start pulling the the diamond players in the GM lobbies and plat players in the GM lobbies, and then it scales down. You get the masters players who has plat players, and then low plat players. Diamond players could have all the way through gold or below. You know what I mean? Like it gets a little, it gets a little bit spooky, um, depending on how long of the match the queue times are. I think. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm willing to see it out. We've seen feedback uh, that having to play as many as 26 matches to get an update has been discouraging for players. Starting with season three, you'll now get competitive. Sorry, you'll get a competitive update with every five wins and 15 losses. In the mid-season patch for Season 3, we're also updating the UI, so information about your progress towards a competitive update will always be viewable. That's cool. That's an awesome change. Um, I, I definitely like have to keep a mental track throughout the like weeks of like, okay, how many games do I need to play to my next rank up? I know currently that I need to play one more tank win, to rank up, and I'm currently GM3. I'm the top of GM3, so I'm ranked like four 400 on top 500, but if I win one game, I will shoot into like 150 because I can't overtake anyone who's GM2 until it re-ranks. But I have to like keep track of that information mentally, and I feel like that's way too much for the average player to know. Um, not that the average player is in top 500, but I guess that's more of a niche problem, but... Still having to keep track of like how many wins I need to rank up is really weird to have to do. Uh, also, beginning with our mid-season patch, top 500 players will see their top 500 leaderboard rank updated after every match, rather than in competitive updates. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, what is this? Wait. Also, beginning with our mid-season patch, top 500 players will see their top 500 leaderboard rank update after every match, rather than competitive updates. Oh. So this is, oh man, this is going to be funny. So, um, streamer is going to have a very different experience than viewer. And you're going to look at my screen and you're going to look at me and you're going to go streamer. Why is your number go up and down every game? You know, and like, it's going to like, be like, what is it going to be like the old overwatch one system? That's funny. That's actually hilarious. And then, and then you come in and you're like streamer. Why do you get an update after every game? I don't get an update after game. Get get rolled. I, I, just the better experience now. Wait a minute. That affects zero people in chat. No, but it it, it doesn't affect them in chat, but it kind of does. Um, because people are there's a lot of people who want to see the uh, rank change after every game, just like it was in Overwatch One. Um, people don't really. There's a lot of people that don't like the waiting for five wins. 
they want to see the update every single time. So if they go and look at streamer game and they're like, streamer, you get update every game. Why don't I get update every game? Um, it's going to look very, very different. It's going to be a very different uh, UI, I think, than uh, than everybody else, which is very this is wild. That's actually wild. So I don't know. Interesting. I, I, I look forward to seeing what that's like, but I also can't wait for the floods of people that are like, streamer. Why do you get a re-rank after every game and I have to wait till five wins? Okay. What we're doing in the near future. Uh, we've heard your feedback and confusion around seasonal rank decay and rank resets. Yo, Arga Darga. Thank you. If I get this buddy, chime. If I get some, make sure you say thank you. Uh, I'm going to keep this rolling because I don't want to uh, slow it down. Um, starting with season four, we're planning to remove seasonal competitive rank resets. Wait, what? In all current and past. Wait a minute. Hold on, I'm sorry, I got I might have got distracted by the five gifties. One sec. We've heard your feedback and confusion around seasonal rank decay and rank resets. Starting with season four, we're planning to remove seasonal competitive rank resets and all current and past seasonal rank decay. What? Okay, okay. Alright, I <clears throat> This is weird. I don't know about this. This is a this is a very interesting one. Um, okay. So the reason why, the reason why the the current system was a failure, was it tried to copy Apex's system where every season you got reset to keep progression going, right? Like I think it even says somewhere up here, we want you to feel a sense of progression without needing to focus on a super granular number like a skill rating. So they want you to feel the progression, right? And and so having to play to rank up again is kind of progression. Um, what Craig said. I miss. So basically, we're not pushing down the the presented skill tiers. Yes, right. I know that. Um, I understand. I understand what it means. But the reason why it was a failure, uh, in most people's eyes, is because when in Apex, you get pushed from diamond to 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 gold, like top of gold, right? You get pulled for, pushed from diamond to the top of gold. You play in gold lobbies, and so everybody who's in the gold lobby at the beginning of the season is diamond. That's just how it is. Like, everybody got reset. But within the few weeks, like, within one, two, three, four weeks, all the diamond players have already climbed out of gold. They're back into diamond. And then the players who were plat have climbed into gold. So then instead of playing against diamond players, you play against plat players. And then if enough time passes, you don't even play against plat players. You play against actual gold players. The reason why the Overwatch system felt terrible was because you would be set, you would get reset from, let's say, diamond to gold, and you would still play in diamond lobbies. So even if you didn't, if you didn't play at the beginning of the season and you didn't play with other players, like right, right when they get the re, the re ranks or the resets happen, you would log in and you'd queue up and then you'd start playing game and someone on your team would start flaming you because like oh, I got a gold player on my team. They're you're like no, I'm not gold. Like I was diamond last season. And they're like, yeah, shut up, dude. You're you're gold. And it's like, they were gold because they're the rank reset, but their MMR on the back end never changed. So what you saw was a fake fake rating. It didn't even matter. The rating you saw was literally a lie. It was it did not matter because it still went off your MMR. So the thing you were shown was a sham. It wasn't real. It was legitimately a placeholder until you played enough games to rank back up to your actual rating. That is stupid. If you are gold, you should be playing against other golds not playing against diamonds because you were diamond last season and just haven't played yet like that's just dumb and like that's how the sense of progression is supposed to go because you're playing against players of your rank but your rank didn't matter that's the point your rank was fake it was literally artificial so i understand getting rid of it is is because a lot of people who didn't like playing ranked a lot lost their rating and i remember from season one to season two a lot of players were really upset that they got reset and they're like what the heck you know i was gold last season and now i'm bronze again like what did i do wrong like this is dumb i lost all my progress but they were still playing against gold players with the bronze rating and it's just stupid because you're you're still having harder games this is something i talked about in overwatch one with a 3900 system in overwatch one if you were gm plus you always at the beginning of the season got reset to 3,900 rating and you would still play against the same caliber of players you were playing at. So if you finished the season at 4,600, the top of GM, you played extremely hard matches as a master's player 
until you had either lost enough games to realign your rank and make them easier so you could win, or uh, or you just kept winning and you got these extreme boosts in, in SR. So instead of getting 30, you got like 45 of win. But the games were incredibly difficult because you were still masters. Like the rank you saw was not the rank in the background, and it was dumb. And it was it confused people because you could finger point at people around you and say, oh, hey, this person's plat. It's why we lost. And it's like, no, they're actually masters. But you don't know that because it's a magic number in the background. That's why the system was a failure. And it set people up for failure. And I, I thought it was really stupid, um, to be honest with you. So I wish, I really wish that it would have went to a way where MMR also got decayed with your actual rank. But it didn't. So, I don't know. I, I guess we're, they're throwing it out. They're going a different route, which is fine. Um, but it's very interesting because they said they want to still have a, a sense of progression. Uh, but they're removing that sense of what would make people progress. Because most players don't really climb out of their rank. I don't think. I think, I think it requires a lot of practice to climb. So, I don't know. We'll see. Anyways. Uh, we'll continue to build out competitive updates in Season 4, and we'll add information about your current wins and losses to your competitive update screens. We're hoping this additional context will help you better interpret changes to your skill tier and division in the update. Okay, interesting. We're also looking into possible ways to provide you with more information about the matchmaking quality of your games. Yeah, I remember this was stuff they had talked about like when Overwatch launched, so interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, long-term plans and goals. In the long term, we're planning to provide players. Sorry, we're planning to provide new ways for players to share a challenging and competitive experience in Overwatch 2. We'll share more of this down the road. That said, matchmaking improvements are an evergreen area of focus for the team, and we'll stay focused on testing and deploying continuous improvements to our matchmaking algorithm. That's good. Finally, we'll continue to watch for your feedback and improve upon the overall ranked experience over time. Our goal continues to be delivering matchmaking that feels fair and balanced for everyone. Another good thing. Closing thoughts. Okay. Uh, the goal of our matchmaker is to make each match feel as fair as possible, meaning your team has an equal chance of winning or losing each individual match. We firmly believe that Sorry, we firmly believe the most games, the most fun games of Overwatch are when they are fair, and our team is committed to dis discovering and implementing new changes and updates that align our game with that goal. Overwatch 2 is a continually evolving experience with new game modes, new heroes, and new maps to explore. This also means we need to provide a consistently updated experience that delivers the fairest possible matches through effective changes to how our matchmaker works and through clear communication with all of you. W. We look forward to seeing all of you on the battlefield. Okay. Frequently asked questions. Uh, do you deliberately place players into winner's queues and loser's queues? <laughs> Oh my god! Wait a minute! Oh my god! Uh, there are no winners and loser queues in Overwatch. Your current MMR is the only thing the matchmaker takes into consideration when forming your matches. The matchmaker doesn't force a 50% win rate on anyone, nor do we ex nor do we favor certain players over others. <laughs> Whoa! I'm actually that's actually hilarious. Mm. I don't know, dude. Losers Q, real winners Q. I know what my title for stream is tomorrow. Uh, winners Q is real. Losers Q is real. Um, this is just propaganda. That's awesome. I, that's actually hilarious. Oh, at its core, our matchmaker is a mathematical formula used to place similarly ranked players together in a match with the goal of creating as fair of games as possible. <laughs> if there was a loser's queue, the wait time would be like zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> Why do I sometimes have a large win or loss streak? 
Sometimes, if a player goes on a very long win slash loss streak, it's indicative that the player's internal rating is not well calibrated. The best way to calibrate your rank is to continually continue playing competitively. The more data we have, the closer you'll get to a rank that best represents your skill. However, there are times when players are going to get lucky with their win streaks and the opposite with loss streaks. This is very actually true. I'll give this. This is actually 100% fact. Um, this is why players who especially place new accounts, if they get placed kind of high, go on massive losing streaks. And they're like, what the heck? I can't win a game. My teammates all suck. It's like, no, the matchmaker didn't do a very good job of placing you the first time. And it's you're basically suffering until you get to where you deserve. Um, and then even on the higher end, you're just as likely to have a really big winning streak as you are as a losing streak in Overwatch. Um, to be honest with you, I, I, the, the funny one that we always reference, me and Emong, is there was a small Ryan change back in Overwatch 1, and me and Emong went 10 0 and just stomped through the ladder. Like, we're talking stomped. Like, literally every game we played was 3 0, 2 0, 2 0, 3 0. Like, disgusting. And I made a tweet that day and said, Ryan is back. And the next day, we went 0-10 without, without fail. <laughs> it was so fucking bad. It was so bad. But I had to I had to take my tweet back and go, nah, I'm just kidding. That was, that was I was totally capping. That still sucks. Ugh. We're investigating this and we'll be testing some changes to see if we can reduce this kind of streaking in the future. Okay. Does my competitive rank affect matchmaking? We only create matches based on player MMR, not the visible competitive rank. So the answer is no. A player's visible rank will move towards their rating over time as they continue to play during a season. When we decay ranks at the beginning of a season, this has no effect on players' underlying ratings. This is why it sucked. Th like, this right here is why the rank system sucked. Period. Point blank. If you do resets, your games have to change. If your games don't change, then there's no point. It's just smoke and mirrors. That's the big problem I always had with the system. You can ask anyone. I have talked to so many people about this for literally months this was my big problem with it. I'm sad that they're going to get rid of the, the the decays. But if this was not something they were going to budge on, it's better to have them gone. So, Why does the quality of my matches go down at the start of a season? This is, I actually know the answer to this. I want to see what they say. When Season 2 went live, a lot of players who stopped playing during Season 1 come back. So the population of players playing ranked changed dramatically overnight. Ratings are a measure of your skill relative to the rest of the players you interact with. Events that cause the population to change a lot will result in some turbulence. We're exploring some ideas on how to tackle this in the future. This is actually really true, but there is a part two to this uh, in my own personal idea, uh, philosophy. Um, ever since um, uh, the downtime has happened, like you know, like remember in old Overwatch, there was like a day or two where ranked wasn't live. It was like end of season was like a day or two before the end of the season. You know what I mean? Do you remember what I'm talking about? Um, where it was a week. Was it a week? It was a week and then three days. It was called the off season. Yeah, the off season where everyone went to play quick play and arcade and everyone just went to f off for a week. That was actually, in my opinion, uh, a good way for high, I'm not talking about the rest of the ranks, higher ranked players had like a reset and they went and chilled out. Because end of season gets people really, really, really worked up. They want to finish top 500. They want to finish GM. They want to finish that next rank. And this goes through all the ranks. Plat, gold, all of them. Um, where they want to get to that next level. And they want to finish there and then stop playing. And be like, I'm done. I got to plat. I'm good. But it's really frustrating to get there. Because you have a lot of people that already got their rank for the season. So they're playing on alt accounts. They're playing with friends. A little bit of trolling. And then what happens is you have when people that hyper care... And they're really like hard calming. They're getting mad at their teammates paired with people who don't give it alt accounts, smurf accounts, whatever the small, the, the other ones are like, Hey, you're going to be a dick to me. All right. I don't care about your game, Fuck your game, dude. You, you want something and you're being a dick to me about it Fuck yourself. So 
people would start kind of trolling more and would just start this vicious cycle where you'd have people that are hardcore trying to get to the next rank and people that don't give a so end of season always kind of became like this mental nightmare and especially in higher ranks too uh the same thing would happen and without that downtime it would actually bleed into beginning of season in my own personal opinion um so end of season and beginning of season felt very similar and this actually happened a lot in overwatch one before there was like big events like a new hero dropping in season two my own personal thoughts on that though so can we do a full rating reset this is just a dumb question this is never going to happen if there was ever a time for to, to do it it was at the beginning of overwatch a full rating reset wouldn't create a great experience since it would mean throwing out all the knowledge we have about players this would cause new players to be matched against owl pros which is fun for about 30 seconds. We've experienced this ourselves in our internal plate. <laughs> Where's the seagull clip? Where's the seagull clip? I need the seagull clip immediately. Oh, this isn't this isn't the one. This is the reporter's one. Um, which to be fair is also really funny, but that's not the one I'm looking for. Um yeah, basically, who for those who don't know, uh, basically before Overwatch 2 beta uh, got released, myself and, and some others got to play test Overwatch 2 um, in the alpha, basically working through, you know, bugs and stuff like that, and just, you know, kind of having a good time. And uh, there was one night me and Seagull and Emong were three stacking at like three in the morning. We bumped into a five stack of some um, some developers, and uh, Seagull went on May and proceeded to 1v5 them on Ilios Well. I'm talking like walked into them, put a wall up, killed two, dropped the wall, and killed the other three by himself. And I was, we were fucking losing it, like full tears. Um, so, <laughs> so, so I, I, I feel like this, I feel like this might have a calling back to something, but uh, who do I know? Uh, to be clear, ratings aren't a hundred percent accurate, accurate representation of every player's skill. Some players aren't in the right spot, but the system is a vast store of knowledge about the relationship in between. Sorry, in the relationship in skill between millions of players, most of whom never even directly played against one another. Fair. Why am I stuck at low rating that doesn't reflect my skill? Uh-oh. Ultimately, the only way you can increase your rating is to win more matches than you lose. Since we're putting any given player on a random team with nine random other players with enough matches... That player's contributions are the only consistent factor throughout. So the rating should end up reflecting their skill. This is the absolute nicest, most corporate way of saying skill fucking issue. <laughs> Get good. And there's always one. <laughs> there is always one common denominator. Actually, this can go even further. Where if you duo with somebody who is of similar skill or greater skill than you. Uh, you only have a chance of a dice roll of three bad players on your team, while the other team has five chances to have a bad player on the other team. So it's actually, uh, if, and even in solo queue, you only have a chance, if you're an amazing player, you have a chance to have four bad players. They have five chances to have a bad player. So over time, if you are actually better, you should climb because your chances of having bad players is lower than the other team. This is hilarious. This is awesome. I love this answer. It goes further. There are some interesting phenomena here the, that makes this more complicated. For example, we have data showing that matches become less predictable the lower the average rating of the match. Predictability is a measure of how likely the favored team is to win because two teams never have identical ratings. One team is always going to be slightly favorite for a variety of reasons, team coordination, gameplay mistakes, and new players who are trying out different roles in 30 plus heroes. The result is that we get a bit less signal. Wait, sorry. The result is we get a little bit less signal to use to calibrate ratings. We're working on some ways to use the signal we get more clearly, so stay tuned. Okay. Uh, so you don't take the number of eliminations, damage dealt, healing provider, any other scoreboard stats to adjust MMR after each match? In Overwatch 2, your MMR adjustment after each match is not impacted by your performance in each match, 
regardless of your skill tier. That's interesting. I thought below diamond, it's still, I thought there was still technically performance based MMR or, or, or SR. That's very interesting. That is a change from Overwatch 1. I've, that's the first time we've heard that. That's very, very interesting because Overwatch 1 below diamond, if you had in crazy stats, you would actually fly through the ranks faster. It was like a system to try to get smurfs out of the lower ranks. The matchmaker would detect that someone was much better than the elo they're in. We and you, we stopped it in Overwatch Two. Oh, so that that is actually confirmed. That's awesome. That's I've never heard. I mean, I don't know how I feel about it to be honest with you, but that's awesome. That's confirmed. I've I've heard people speculate about it, but that's the first. This is the first time it's actually confirmed. So interesting. Um, this is for a few reasons. We don't want players to be focused on doing things other than trying to focus on the objectives to, and win the match. Dealing the most damage or getting kills won't help your team if your actions don't help them push the payload or capture the control point. This reminds me of Emong so much because he, he talked about how no one ever pushed the payload. Also, for some heroes, especially those in the support role, it can be challenging to determine if the numbers they produce reflect their skill. Very true. Some people have, cr like, some people pick Mercy in the lower ranks and, and farm up, like, 40,000 healing. And they're like, I have 40,000 healing. How can I win? And it's like, you should not have 40,000 healing on Mercy throughout a game. Like, that should never happen. Like, Lucio is another good example, you know? Um, we would just have hard-focusing high-damage potential heroes to climb otherwise. I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess you could do that with almost any of the uh, the numbers, realistically. But there's a lot of people who did do that in, like, Overwatch 1. I remember people, like, who were, like, bronze. They'd be like, I had, I finished a game with 60,000 damage on Soldier, and I can't climb. It's like, dude, you watch back the VOD, and they sat there shooting the, their tank the entire game, and they had, like, 15 limbs, and it's like, bro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why do streamers and pro players often have such long queue times and often end up in poor quality matches? Oh, my God. Perhaps the largest factor that influences match quality is just the population of players at their skill level. Top 500 is a small population compared to the millions of players at lower ranks. Towards the, setting, towards the center of the rating curve, there are tons of players in the matchmaking queue for us to choose from, all of whom would allow for a good match, so it's easier for us to ensure a good match quality. Contrast this with Overwatch League pros, who make up something like 0.00001% of the Overwatch player population. This is why you should not try to go pro. Your chances are very, very small. Um, unless you actually, like, legitimately have some backing and, and a reason to. But, like, if you're, like, gold and you're like, I want to be an owl pro, give it up, bro. And I, and I say that for your own mental sanity. Um, for players at the very top... It's very hard to guarantee a good experience because there are just so few players. Fundamentally, it often comes down to a hard trade-off between making worse matches or dramatically increasing queue times, and they're unfortunately already very long for these players. Emong's a great example of this. I've been watching him this week, and I swear every time he queues, he's actually probably still waiting for me. He messaged me before I started reading this, said he was going to queue a game of tank. He's probably still sitting there waiting for me right now. Um... We have some chance. You know, I actually kind of. I want to kind of. I'm gonna go check. Yep, that's about what I expected. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! You got 20 gifties though. Hey, hey, that's awesome. Anyways, um. We have some changes coming that would improve match quality for high MMR players, and we're talking about even more sophisticated things that we could do in the future. Okay, I have one takeaway about this last part. I'm be real with you. We've been told for a very long time that you know there's so many problems with high high rating matches, and and, and to be honest with you, I'm really sick of hearing them. Uh, if I'm just being quite honest, uh, it it is is the game quality is it doesn't seem that good, and the queue times are just unbearable. The, the higher you are, the worse you're actually kind of punished for it. Uh, I think it's time to unlock stacking, to be honest. I know that people have said for the longest time that, like, oh, stacking really removes, like, you know, how uh, the quality of matches are. But, like, also, though, if if the player pool is already that small, if there's a five stack of players that are playing that are high rated, 
you can just grab the first high five rated players, even solo queue players, and throw them against them. And I guarantee it's not going to be that big of a difference. Um, as long as the queue times are somewhat similar, I actually don't think it would be that bad. And on top of that, too, in games like Apex, it's actually encouraged for you to stack with players. Most masters and pred players do not solo queue. There are very, very, very few players in those games that solo queue. They have a whole environment of playing with others. And actually, Apex right now is having a conversation on should they allow people to stack uh, in the high ratings. And most of the the pro slash streamer community is like, absolutely don't take that away. That is the last thing we have because it makes better content for them. It's better experience for the pros and it's a better experience for the gamers and players. The only people who lose are the solo queue Andy's and I'm and the solo queue Andy only people playing half the time are kind of miserable. Like they, they never talk. They don't want to like, they just play like whatever they're playing and they're going to keep playing anyways. They're not going to go anywhere. They're going to keep playing the game. They just want everyone else to get sucked into their their same bubble. And it's like, I understand wanting to have the higher quality matches, but the quality of matches isn't already high. It's not even that good with the current system we have. At least unlocking it and making it so you can play with friends and play, play with others gives the potential for other things to happen. And you could end up having improved queue times because you don't have to worry about playing against duos and trios or whatever it is. They'll be playing against each other. So... I don't know. Anyways, though, uh, I, I think that I think it's I think it's one of the things that Overwatch really, really missed on over the years, because at the end of the day, it's still a game. It's still uh, something you're supposed to have some fun with and uh, not being able to play with friends in, in, in a game because you got good in a, in a team based competitive shooter uh, is a major miss, in my opinion. So anyways, though, this overall uh this overall article is really cool to see. There's actually a lot of good things in it. Um, my only my only strife was like the removal of the decay because I think the decay wasn't done properly. It's just like I don't think it was the decay's fault. I think it was the implementation. But if we weren't gonna go back and change the implementation for the MMR, if that's something they're not gonna budge on, then it's good to get remove it, remove it entirely. So. Also, I can't wait for everyone to come in and go, Streamer, why do you why do you get updates every game? Mine doesn't update. It's going to be a good time. So, anyways, though, good article. Good stuff on the future. I hope ranked and competitive improves, because uh, I know for a lot of self people, myself included, it hasn't felt great. So, looking forward to it. He's made one on five. Having ranked decay is good. The sense of progression. Not being able to camp your rank for years. Like, so, okay. Really fast retro for one second um why why decay is good is because there's a lot of people that just camp their rank for years there's that guy who they, they got plat in season nine of overwatch and they were still plat in season 27 they just come back play their placements and they leave you know like they've been basically camping the rank for years that's just what they do um also i'm on 135 ms that's interesting um but having decay it forced them to play more often and uh, they wouldn't, because like realistically, a plat in season eight was not the same as a plat in season twenty-four. Like they were not the same caliber of player. Um, they would just come back, play their placements, and go again. It was really, really not a good time. But from the way the system was implemented, I mean, as long as it wasn't long, long periods of time, I don't think that there was a huge MMR decay. Um, so they would actually just keep farming that rank over and over. We need both STD and MMR decay that match together. Correct. That's that's the reason why, I, that's why I think it would have been good. If your skill ranking and your matchmaking rating actually somewhat aligned, then it would have been good. Um, but the fact that your skill ranking uh, that you were shown literally didn't mean anything, and it was in your background rating, which is what matches were uh, based off, the MMR didn't change. It actually didn't change the quality of your matches at all. Uh, so realistically, the system wasn't real. It didn't actually do what I think it was intended to do. Or maybe it was intended that way. If it was intended that way, then, then that's a miss. So, <clears throat> that's why.